Uh, in any event, we're going to move to the, the age of discovery. And particularly, we want to look at Spain. Spain's interaction with the natives of the New World. Because we all know, we hear all, all the time about the crimes of Columbus and the crimes of the conquistadors. But what we don't hear so much about is the crisis of conscience that this provoked in Spanish philosophers and theologians. Because in the 16th century, particularly around the University of Salamanca in Spain, you get Spanish philosophers asking the question, should we be acting this way? Should we be treating these natives like garbage? Or should we not recognize in them a common spark of humanity that would in turn demand of us that we extend to them the same rights that we would extend to our fellow Europeans? And what we find is that one of the silver linings amidst the demographic disaster that struck the natives of the New World was that it provoked this kind of soul-searching on the part of Spanish intellectuals. Thank you very much. Oh, baby, that's beautiful. And so it was at this moment that we start to hear the idea really taking root of natural rights, of norms that govern the conduct of states, that states aren't just generators of of powers that states, in fact, have to be subject to the moral law. They're not morally autonomous. And so, therefore, the Spanish government can't just behave however it wishes toward these people. Francisco de Vitoria is considered to be one of the, the founders. Oh, I get another delivery of water. Great. No, 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 I'll take it. Um, Francisco de Vitoria is called one of the founders of international law. Now, we hear international law, we think boo, hiss. But all he means by it is not a United Nations. All he means by it is simply that there's a single standard of justice that applies to all people. Now, this is not a common thing to come across in the world, this emphasis on there being a single standard of justice that applies to me and to my people just as much as it applies to you and your people. Uh, I, I mean, we don't have any record of Attila the Hun sitting back and saying, gosh, should I really be treating people this way or should I maybe stop these conquests in the name of natural rights? You know, I mean, I mean, he was, apparently he was asked once, you know, how come you're looting and pillaging and stealing stuff from people? And he said, well, I don't know, because I, I want to take people's stuff. Like, why are you even asking me the question? Or, or likewise, the Harvard historian Samuel Elliott Morrison points out that a number of the North American tribes, uh, Indian tribes, they had the same word for the people as they had for members of our tribe and the same word for enemy or son of the she-dog or whatever they would apply to members of other tribes. Now, if you're going to think in that way, you're never going to reach a level at which you can make a universal statement about universal, uh, universally applicable natural rights. So this is a rarity in the history of the world. So Francisco de Vitoria uh, argues that the natives are rational, so they enjoy, they, they possess the distinguishing characteristic of human beings, and they are created in God's image, and therefore they, they are entitled to the same treatment we would accord to our fellow Europeans. He says that they may not have their property taken from them. They, not, they may not be, in other words, expropriated on the grounds that they can't really be true owners. They're just stupid old natives. No, no, no. No, that's not right. Uh, he says, to the contrary, uh, the Aborigines undoubtedly have true dominion in both public and private matters, just like Christians. And neither their princes nor private persons could be despoiled of their property on the ground of their not being true owners. So they have the rights to property just the same way everyone else has. Domingo de Soto, his colleague, again insisted natural rights apply to and are enjoyed by all people. De Soto said, those who are in the grace of God are not a whit better off than the sinner or the pagan in what concerns natural rights. So this is by and large the opposite of what people think Christians believe. You know, we Christians get to do things and we get to kill everybody else. That's really not what the mature uh, late scholastics of, of uh, 16th century University of Salamanca are saying. And they conclude, moreover, that the natural law, as St. Paul says in the Bible, is written on the human heart. We have an, a, a sense of what's right and wrong. We, we kind of know instinctively what's right and wrong. Sometimes this sense needs to be refined or uh, to some degree corrected. We have a, a basic sense of right and wrong. And because we all possess this, and this is something that brutes do not possess, you know, an aardvark doesn't have an internal sense of moral right and wrong, but human beings do, this therefore 
links us all in a kind of sublime mystical equality because we all possess this ability to reflect on our actions in light of universal principles written on our hearts. This is something that belongs only to homo sapiens, not to anyone else. And on these grounds, again, this basis of equality and this idea that human beings enjoy a special dignity for this reason and because they enjoy rationality, they have a certain equality that therefore means that no one of us has any innate particular power to exercise our, uh, arbitrary power over anybody else. We all have a certain equality on, this, on these grounds. 